cricket, the dried up cricket. You wanna see it? That's a real, that's the real deal, right there. Um, Craig, did you just eat a bug? Yep. It's good. I like it. It's not bad. I actually bad. like it. It's tasty. I think anyone would like these. Anyone would like Anyone with, with good taste buds. Okay, maybe I'm just saying what everybody's thinking, but why? This episode is all about the future of food. Why would you eat a bug when you could eat a burger made of pea protein? Bugs are already here, and they're plentiful, and they may become a bigger part of our diet, and for good reason. That sounds gross. Just give it some time. You'll come around. A lot of the world already has. I went to the Peggy Notabart Nature Museum in Chicago and talked to Steve Sullivan, curator of urban ecology and bug connoisseur. Does a lot of the world eat bugs already? Oh well, yeah, a lot of the world eats bugs. I've done field research in, in South Africa where the Mopane worm, which is basically a, the caterpillar of a little gypsy moth-like thing, forms in some cases the majority of the animal protein that those people get. I lived in Southeast Asia for a while and bugs are just sort of a normal part of, of what you might choose to eat in a given day. Okay, so a lot of people throughout the world eat bugs. Fine! But just because they're doing it doesn't mean I necessarily want to jump on the bug wagon. Fair enough. But in the end it doesn't really matter because you've already eaten plenty of bugs. When was the first time you ate bugs? Well, I'm sure the first time I ate baby food here in the United <laughs> States. Because bugs really are so ubiquitous that it's impossible to remove them from our food chain. And so in fact, all processed food is going to contain some amount of bug. Peanut butter is pretty bad. Uh, the FDA can detect up to 30 fragments per 100 grams of peanut butter and not do anything. And then chocolate is double that. And you say bad, but is it bad that we're eating, eating bugs? No, it's actually not bad. I mean, it doesn't affect us health-wise at all. It's just a little bit of extra protein mixed in there. Why didn't I get a candy bar? Why should people eat bugs? Bugs really are uh, an efficient source of protein. In some respects, bugs, we could say they're sort of like animated soybeans. It's just a little package of protein that you can do all sorts of things with. On average, it takes about 10 pounds of feed to produce one pound of beef. However, with that same amount of feed, you can produce six pounds of edible insect protein. You can also eat a much larger percentage of an insect's body. Only 40% of a cow is edible, compared to 80% of a cricket. Bugs are very sustainable because they'll, they eat uh, very low on the food chain. Bugs eat things that we won't eat or that we can't eat. Things like uh, wood, termites are an excellent source of protein and they taste pretty good, and they'll eat wood. Nothing else really can eat wood. Rich societies uh, have often enjoyed eating things like cow or very large ungulate, but raising those giant slabs of protein is very resource intensive. On average, producing one pound of beef requires 1,800 gallons of water, whereas one pound of insect protein only requires one gallon of water. Cows need a lot of land, too. Almost two full acres of land is needed for each cow being raised, and it takes about 18 to 22 months for a cow to fully mature. On the other hand, 55 to 65 pounds of crickets can be contained in a small 4 by 8 foot pen, and can be harvested every six weeks. And so what this means is there's less pollution, basically, as a result of that, and there's less habitat destruction. Uh, we worry about things like CO2 emissions and stuff like this, and ultimately, by eating lower on the food chain, all of those things, uh, are, they're not eliminated, but they're mitigated. They're significantly less impact. People associate bugs with disease. Can't you get diseases from eating bugs? Is that more? Is it more unsanitary in some way? I guess I would say that's very species specific. So if you consider uh, something like pig, there are a lot of cultures around the world that have prohibitions against pig. Now sometimes that prohibition is simply, we don't do this because we don't do this. But at other times it is for health reasons. And of course, pigs, because of the things they eat and the way they live, they have a whole variety of parasites that if we eat those, we can get them. Bugs have many of the same kinds of parasites and bacteria. But the cool thing is, is we humans, we invented this thing called fire. Flame -age. I've heard of it. It's, it's, it's this thing that we oftentimes forget the benefits of fire. All we have to do is take this thing and cook it. And when you cook it to the right internal temperature, it's safe to eat. All right, those seem like really good reasons to start chowing down on some of our six-legged friends. But it still seems pretty gross. Why is that? Why are we so grossed out about bugs? Well, I think that has a lot to do with cultural... Uh, training. You know, we went through the, the 50s where everything had to be perfectly sanitary and bugs are viewed as icky. And, you know, if you go back in sort of a, a Eurocentric cultural perspective, things like lobsters, those are disgusting. Uh, you know, when the pilgrims came to America, they might use lobsters as fertilizer for their crops, but they would never deign to eat one. Lobster is delicious. Lobster is delicious, but it takes a certain cultural change for us to be able to look at that and say this is food 
versus this is foreign. A lot of times we think of eating bugs as eating that whole thing, the whole body of the animal. But you know, when's, when's the last time we ate the whole body of a cow? You know, sometimes we have pig roasts, but even then you're taking select portions. So for the most part, when we're eating bugs, um, I think from a culinary standpoint, it's better to just incorporate them as an ingredient and not really as a whole carcass of something. So did you like it when you first ate it? Um, I did have some of that cultural baggage. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had to take my intellectual knowledge and say, I know this is safe to eat and I can see other people eating it and they're enjoying it. And I ate it. It's a little bit weird, you know, sometimes those exoskeletons are creepy and, you know, if you get a, if you get a leg stuck in your teeth, that's, that's just gross. But upon reflection and, and sort of disassociating myself from the bug, I said, you know, this is kind of fun. It's crunchy. We love crunchy. Uh, it's, it's got sort of a smoky, musky flavor. Well, we love that. And so there's not really any good excuse that I could come up with for not liking bugs. So we really need to look at food as both a source of, of nutriment for ourselves to grow our bodies, but also as a source of adventure and fun and sociality. And once we look at that, then we realize there's a whole panoply of things that we can eat that we haven't thought of before. We're gonna be cooking up some really fun bugs here and, and you'll taste that not only does the individual species taste different, but also the preparation techniques can change the flavor and they can really add some, some vibrancy to the food that you eat. Well, let's go eat some bugs. All right. <laughs> So what have we here? Here we have the insects that we're going to eat. Right here we have the dry roasted crickets. This is after they've been baked in the oven at 200 degrees for 45 minutes. You can crush them up into a powder and mix them in with the flour now, or we just directly, I directly press them into some cookies. These are the cookies? Yep, that's the cookie. It's a chocolate chirp cookie. Chocolate chirp cookie. I see what you did there. And here we have our mealworms. So these we're going to boil for three minutes and then deep fry for another three minutes. I'm, I'm a little appetized right now. I'm actually getting hungry. They already kind of look like french fries, don't they? Yeah. And then here we have the chapulinas. Uh, this is a Mexican grasshopper. Uh, I purchased them from Mexican grocery already cooked, um, but we'll fry them up with some veggies and make them tastier. Okay, what, which, what, what is that? So these are the wax worms that we were talking about. What we're doing right here is what we is the gut loading. They'll eat the fruit and then they'll also tunnel into this meal. And so they're all in here. They're just surrounded by food. They're, yep. they're, they're food. They live in their food. That's kind of that's kind of heaven, isn't it? So right now we're gonna make our appetizer, and that is the mealworm fries. Ooh. Deep fried bugs. Now if you don't boil them first, they're not gonna fry right. Shove this in. Some people might be watching and being like, ooh, onion, they're gonna eat onion? They're gross. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. It's, this is the meat of the taco. It's gonna be mostly these. All right. This is gonna be a very thick Whew. grasshopper taco. Where's my bugs? Oh yeah. And then we've got a bit of the- we'll a little more. A little more. Stir fried. Okay. Uh, wax worms okay. here, and make sure to get some of the liquid that'll infuse the rice with a good flavor. Probably should have given you a bigger plate, you know. <laughs> and of course, uh, we should have a little bit of appetizer here. Ah, a little mealworm appetizer? Okay, I will have one. Pretty good, huh? It's not bad. It's really not bad at all. You know, sim similar to a, a perfect fast food french fry, it's got a a crispy outside and a soft inside. Yeah, total, totally a good snack. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hey, you can see most of these insects, they have kind of a mellow flavor. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's really good. I'm gonna go taco or we're gonna go stir fry. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get some bug on there. Some wax worm. All right, here goes. Very good. Got a, it, it's got a cool texture, it does pop a little bit. Well, and that's part of the reason that I like this particular dish for something like this, because the textures really blend. All right. I never eat in a, such a coordinated manner with people. <laughs> it's almost like a team sport. Yeah, are we ready? It's good, it's a good crunch to it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like um, El Pastor taco. Sure. Kind of what it tastes like, but a little crunchier. <clears throat> mm. Oh yeah, that's good. Seriously, if you didn't tell somebody 
that this was bugs, they would be fine eating this, I'm sure. Oh yeah. As the population grows and as we create more problems based on our current system, do you see a possible future where, we're, where we have bugs more in our cuisine? Whether or not we want to, we're going to need to turn to additional sources of protein. And so I think insects will become a more prominent, more common feature of the average diet. Well, I'm gonna try to eat a lot more bugs after this. Well, hopefully we've shown you the, uh, the simple techniques so that you can bring them home and, mm -hmm. and cook them up easily. Everything was great, this was a great meal. So I thought bugs were pretty tasty, but what do you guys think? Have you ever had bugs before? Did you like them? Would you consider making bugs a regular part of your diet? Let us know in the comments. Well, I'm convinced, and I'm gonna start doubling my bug intake right now. <sighs> Kinda miss the point. Where is on? So last week we asked you what you guys thought about Beyond Meat and plant-based meat products. Here's what you guys had to say. Voila Tada and a number of you were concerned about the price of them. And it is true that Beyond Meat's products do cost generally more than regular meat. This is a good point. And if Beyond Meat really wants to solve the climate problem and shift people away from animal-based meat to plant-based meat, they're gonna have to figure out how to lower the price. Beyond Meat is still a young company, so this may eventually happen as production techniques improve and more competitors enter the market. However, I think a big question we should be asking is why is meat so cheap to begin with? In the US, a lot of government subsidies go into the meat and dairy industries, which is partially why the price can be kept so low. And a lot of cows are fed on a diet mostly of corn, which is also subsidized. So if you think about it, even though the price tag on that meat is lower, we're still paying for it in our tax dollars. Not to mention the additional cost to the environment and the quality of life of the animal if you're concerned about that. But that's a different topic. Now if you compare the price of Beyond Meat's products to grass-fed, hormone-free beef or free-range chicken, it's a lot closer. And who knows, maybe someday those sweet, sweet government subsidies will go to plant-based meat producers. Mm. Or to me. Some, I can dream. Subsidize me. Be Goodful asked if we had any stats on how much water is used or how much greenhouse gases are emitted through Beyond Meat's uh, process versus the meat production process. We asked Beyond Meat and they said it takes about 80 gallons of water to make one pound of the Beast Burger, which is a lot less than the 1,500 to 2,500 gallons it takes to make one pound of regular beef. As for greenhouse gas emissions, we don't have any exact numbers, but when you're looking at the total emissions from meat production, you have to take into account raising the livestock and the transportation and the process there, as well as raising the, the feed for them. So there's transportation and processing there as well. So in Beyond Meat's process, you're basically taking out one half of that. You're taking out all the livestock. So like any industrial process, there'll still be greenhouse gas emissions, just a lot less. 85.2 FM and the random science girl pointed out that most of the methane cattle produce comes from the mouth and not from the other end. The tuchus. We actually did not know that, thank you. But we maintain that farts are funnier than burps, so we made sure to go that route for the animation. That's all, thank you for all the great questions and comments. Yeah, I think that's probably the most questions and comments we've ever gotten for a video. Mm -hmm. So a really good job there. Yeah. Keep and it up. You did a good job answering as well. You know, I like to think I'm good at answering stuff. I was kind of hoping for a reciprocal sort of, I did a good job as well, but. You did, you did okay.